awkward shaped mould. Let's make one. Now, I need to make a new mould of this little guy. This is an ornament I've had for ages. And the first problem that you have with this little guy for making a mould with, like many ornaments, is he's hollow. Now, last time I used him, I did fill him with something. I don't actually know what that was, it's been that long. Um, but really, what I want to do, because I still found he floated up and yeah, it was a real pain. Um, what I really want to do is seal this better this time. So, I am going to fill the bottom with polyurethane resin. First thing is to try and get it flat, because clearly that isn't flat. Well, I am on his head, it's, yeah. So, I'm going to get together some sand and we will fill him up properly. Uh, or rather top up what's already there actually and give him a nice flat base then we've got something to work with then we'll be making the mould in a margarine tub because not everybody has got one of those mould making frames so the sand we're using is magic sand let me zoom out a bit there we are now this was four pounds from Primark and I haven't tried it before but it occurred to me that this was something that might be good for. Uh, first it comes to the <laughs> sandcastle making kit. Anyway, it's like sticky sand. It's really strange. So I thought maybe this would work. Shall we try? I think first of all I need to get like a, a spade. <laughs> and uh, well actually it'll be a plastic knife. And make a piggy shaped indentation in it. This is too flimsy. That's uh, it's surprisingly strong stuff. Let me find something a bit more sturdy. Gosh, it's ever so weird. Right, I'm going to break it up first. The other problem I got is I can't find my little spirit levels. I've got two tiny spirit levels somewhere. That I could make sure it's level with. <laughs> Gosh, this is very strange stuff. If you've got actual sand, can I just suggest you use actual sand? I just wanted to try this. Um, yeah, very odd. Is that broken up enough? I don't need to support him. Oh, look, you can squish him in. Oh, I'm going to get my head down here and just look. It doesn't have to be absolutely flat, but it wants to be as close as you can get it. That appears to have worked. Right, I'm going to get some gloves and my uh, respirator and everything on. Get the window open and let's fill the back of this up with some... Um, I'm going to use polyurethane resin because it's really quick and it'll cure nice and fast. So, uh, yeah, that'll be that job done. I'm back and the polyurethane resin I'm using is the white one from Let's Resin. If you've not used it before, it's a one-to-one. -one. It starts clear, ends up white. It's clever stuff and it cures in about 10 minutes flat. And I've probably mixed up way too much there. So it's always pays to have, you know, a mould handy that you want to chuck it in. You've usually got some old jewellery mould handy, something like that. In fact, here's a little mould. Let's have that to hand. So you do need to move quite quickly with this. Um, mixing it is a very quick process. You really do have to whip it up a bit like I've just done. Because you've only got like about five minutes pot time with it. Now I'm going to pour it into, initially, into that hole. and get it to go in. Doesn't want to. Anyway, the main thing is to fill up this recess in the bottom. You can you can make you know what I've guessed that level quite well. You can um do moulds where you've got a recess in the bottom like this. You can. Um, right, stopping there. Because what you can do is um, just put glue around the edges. In fact, that's what I've done with this little guy before. But I just thought this time, what we'll try and do is get him nice and flat. Because that will make the moulding process even easier. Right, I'm going to leave that for a few minutes. Um, in the meantime, 
think I mixed up way too much actually. So let's find a bigger mould to chuck this in quite quickly. And see the white forming. There you go. Amazing, isn't it? Right, I'm going to leave that for 10 minutes and I will speed this bit up for you just because it's quite nice watching it. And then I'll be back to see how far we've got and we'll plan the actual mould. This sand is interesting. I bet you could use it for proper sand casting. Weird stuff. Hmm. Anyway, back shortly. really well and according to my timer on my camera here that's been four minutes mad isn't it anyway I'm just going to put it to one side uh, and start preparing our workspace and the first thing to say is silicon sticks to silicon if you don't want to risk getting your mat spoilt put something on it anything will do I'm just going to put probably a sheet of paper if I can find some okay let's uh well that's the guinea pig is calling let's get this sorted so what we've got here is a margarine tub Morrison spreadable to be exact now make sure I've made sure I've degreased it using some washing up liquid but I am going to go around it with some alcohol anyway not to worry about the sides but obviously the base I want to be grease free because I want the guinea pig to stick the sides will be handy if they're not yeah, if they're not too clean in a way, because the mould will come out easier. The last time I made one of these moulds, it's so long ago, it was using some orange um, weird ratio silicon. And the mould wasn't so great, to be honest. It did the job, but it's before I really knew more about making moulds. So, I've got that nicely degreased. So the next thing then is to make sure that your item that you're moulding from is nice and clean too. So I'm going over with him, going over him with an alcohol wipe. Now, when I originally introduced this video, I said about awkward shapes and taking moulds from them. The reason this is all, this one's awkward, is because of his ears. Obviously, there's the hollowness that we've dealt with, but also he gets bubbles trapped under his ears and under his chin. So you want to make sure that your mould is as good as it can be to start with. There. So he's nice and clean. I'm just going to give him a quick dry off on my t-shirt. I really must bring some towels in here. Anyway, I can see there's a little bit once cleaning off here still. You've got to get your piggy's butt good, haven't you? There we are. That's where I've got a bit of the PU went around underneath. There we are. Sorted. So, give him another little wipe. So we should now have a nicely prepared original. The next thing to do is to stick him down. Now, don't be tempted to use plasticine, blue tack or anything like that, because a lot of that sort of thing will react with your silicon. I found this stuff pretty good, although I do need to make sure it dries absolutely completely. So I'm gonna put this on. And now we've got a nice flat base. This whole part is a lot easier. I can just put a thin layer all over, like so. I'm going to make sure I go around the edge because that's where you want to seal to stop the silicon from coming underneath. As far as possible. And then we're going to put him down and I'm going to leave him for a good couple of hours. pressed him down well and I'll put the glue away. Links for everything will be below, not the ornament obviously but the glue, um, the silicon. What else are we using? That's it for today actually I think. Although when we finish him I might make him into a fairy light. <laughs> so I'll put you the links for the uh, lights and things if I do that. See you in a couple of hours. Gonna let that cure properly. I've made sure I've pressed him down well and that he's nice and central and we're just gonna leave him. So I'll see you later. Right, I'm back and that's stuck. Boop. 
Now, what I do tend to do anyway is do my first layer of silicone quite thin and just leave it for a couple of hours to get a bit gloopy. Not kill completely, but just go gloopy, just to make sure he's stuck. <laughs> That's the first thing. So, let's, uh, I'm using up the last of uh, a bottle, two bottles of silicone here. And I'm not wearing my gloves because silicone's not dangerous. It's just messy though. So, let's get a little cup out. And I'm just going to just going to tip the bottle upside down. It's my usual silicon from Let's Resin. Now, of course, this doesn't need to be clear. The fact that it, well, translucent, the fact that it actually is, is just a bonus. So I'll empty this out and then I've got some new bottles that I'll, uh, I'll fill it up with a bit more. But let's get this first layer done first. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so it's used up the last of those bottles. I'll start some fresh bottles for the next layer. But in the meantime, I'm just going to mix this up thoroughly. So for anybody who hasn't seen this particular silicon rubber before, or made moulds before, um, this one dries translucent, which is handy if you're going to be doing using it to make things that you might be using ultraviolet curing resin with, because it'll let the light through if it's a small piece. So it's good from that point of view. It's also a nice soft silicon. So it, uh, it makes it easier to demould. It also degasses itself well. If you're worried about the bubbles, you can run them through one of these uh, airless debubbling machine vacuum chamber type things if you really want to. Um, I generally don't find it's too much of a problem if I pour it carefully anyway. Uh, it, it just debubbles itself. So I'm just going to pour this around his little feetsies. Like I said, I'm just making sure he's well and truly stuck down before I go filling the whole thing up. Um, you only have to have something keep floating up once to know that uh, taking your time about gluing it down properly, preparing your piece properly and then doing this is time well spent. So I'm just going to, I probably will need to mix up just a little bit more. I'm going to put down, what um, depending on where you are, quarter of an inch, maybe just under a centimetre, depending on what measurements you work in. So that's all I'm going to do. Then I'm going to leave him for a couple of hours. This silicon cures nice and fast. Um, I find a couple of hours it should be going sort of a bit thick and sticky. There we are. As I said, it's a one-to-one -one, so it's easy to measure. Um, you do want to be reasonably accurate. I've been doing this for a long time now so I do tend to Mostly just eyeball it, to be perfectly honest. Um, some of my cups have got little measuring marks on that you probably can't see on camera because I've noticed that you can't. But um, with this, I tend to... Well, if I know how much I've used out of the bottle, if they've both ended up at the same level again, <laughs> I've done it right, haven't I? Yeah, they've gone down to the same amount. On the bottle, it does say to do it by weight, but it works by volume too. And I work that out because the bottles are of identical size and are equally full. Therefore, it must work by volume, mustn't it? And indeed it does. So I'm going to mix this up, pour it in. He's just going to be up to his ankles in it, basically. <laughs> and I'll see you in a couple of hours when we top it up. And that's the bit where we can fill it right up. So I'll see you later. Okay, we're a couple of hours on. No sign of him moving or anything. Of course, that initial stage, if you're not concerned about movement because your item is uh, really substantial and heavy, I've got a little ghost that I make mould from and I know he's absolutely solid. So you needn't do that first step. I just like to, because I've had problems with him floating before, I just like to make sure. And what we're going to do as we fill him up is just have a poke around. You could tip the mould backwards and forwards if you want, but I'm just going to have a poke around and make sure there's no bubbles trapped under his ears and his chin. Now, I think at the mould making stage that shouldn't be a problem. But certainly, because it wasn't last time I did this, but certainly was when it came to actually casting the resin out of it. So I've been stirring this more slowly because it's a bigger pot. Like I said, you could run it through a bubble removing machine, some people do that. 
and I've been stirring it now for a good couple of minutes. The only time I've ever really gone wrong with this silicon, because it's it's um, it's just really easy to work with. It's easier than any other one I've found before, to be honest. Um, yeah, so the only reason I've ever gone wrong is if I haven't taken the time to stir it properly. You need to make sure you get right down into the corners of your pot and stir it probably for two minutes longer than you think you need to. So I usually go for a good four minutes or so. Very often I'll have a cup of tea on the go so I can just stand there watching the world go by out of the window and drinking my tea and stirring. So that should be well and truly done now. We're going to pour it in. I'm just going to chuck it all over him. It takes a surprisingly large amount of silicon this. You can do that trick where you put bungs and things in if you want to reduce the amount of silicon you're using and if that if you do that um, then you will of course make the mould even bendier and easier to demould. However, I'm not bothering with this one. If you want to see how to do that and thinking what the hell is she talking about, then um, have a look at my mould making videos. Um, there's a whole playlist of them. In fact, I'll put the link up here for you at the end. There's a whole playlist of them. And they, uh, they will show you what I'm talking about there. So I'm just trying to get some silicon up under his ears. Clearly I'm going to have to make another batch. And I'm getting under his chin. Could do with like a hook shaped thing. Hang on, what have I got? What have I got? Oh, I know. I've got some hook shaped tweezers. So let's get under his chin with those. Make sure there's no bubbles. Then I'm going to mix some more up and just top him up. Now you want to make sure, I'm going to make sure, in fact I'm right up to the top of this pot because you need a decent depth um, above his head, otherwise the bottom of your mould is going to be too flimsy. I did make one once that was too flimsy and eventually it tore. Incidentally, if you're using tweezers in your silicon, you can just leave the silicon on them. It makes them easy to clean next time. So you can just peel, peel the silicon off. Anyway, enough waffle. I'm going to top him up and I will see you for the demold. Right, time to get the uh, get the mold out. And it comes out really. You see how bendy this silicon is. That's lovely. So we can just go. And can out he comes. There we are. <laughs> now, I could trim up around the edge a little bit here, so I think I'll do that. I'm just going to get a pair of scissors to it, like so, and uh, then we'll try it out. Now, I've got an order for a light-up guinea pig, so let's go ahead. Let's make one. I've got my messy tray ready. Somebody asked about this. I showed this in a recent video, and they said, but you didn't show us what it looked like at the end. Said, oh, um, it was only part of... This was just something I was doing to the side of the video that was I was actually making. But I poured some silicon while I was making a mould into this little tray that was made of just all my leftover resin. So uh, yeah, there you go. That's that's how it works, people. And then you can just pop that in and out to clean it. Right, put my put my uh, stirring sticks down on it to avoid making a mess of my mat so much. So that's all that is. It's just a bit of silicon chucked in a tray. Right, let's get this guinea pig done. Gloves on, PPE sorted, and we'll get some resin mixed. Okay, so I've got some resin mixed up. It's Apex High Gloss. It's just a, a nice, simple one-to-one -one resin. It goes to quite a depth, really, for an, a regular resin. Um, I've certainly used it for the depth of this guinea pig before with no problems whatsoever. Cures up in about 20 hours, I suppose. Sometimes I, I often find if it's warm in this room, it'll cure a bit quicker than that. But I'll leave it for a good long time. The other things I've got to hand are a little bit of glitter. This is a holographic purple, which has got a bit left. I thought I'd put a tiny little bit in with the resin. Um, the order I've had is for a multicoloured light-up one. So I don't want to put too much. But I just thought that would just give us a little bit of sparkle. The other thing I've got is some battery-powered fairy lights. There we are, nice and bright. Now the only problem I have with putting fairy lights in things is you tend to get the wires and things start sticking up out the bottom and 
it's a bit of a pain. So I decided I would put on the back of it a holographic inlay. And this is a nice chunky heavy one. Um, I can't even remember where I got this from. Maybe in Julia Art Studio, I'm not sure. But that'll give it some extra sparkle as well. But it, what I want to do is just slap it on the back and it will it'll hold the wires down. <laughs> My gloves are sticking to the silicon. That funny ways. Anyway, I shall carry on mixing this up and I shall be back in a moment. Okay, so the uh, resin is mixed up. Let's get our fairy lights sorted. These are really cheap. Uh, I bought a big bundle of these from... You know, I've had this big bundle. I bought 100 sets. I'll see if I can find them Find them in sets of, like, um, either individually or in tens or something like that. You know, normal people might want. <laughs> and put you a link below. They've got them on Amazon, I know. And uh, eBay and various other places. Got a feeling this job lot was from Amazon. But, you know, you're, they're, if you buy them in a bunch of, say, ten or something, you'll spend only, what... Two pounds, something like that, three maybe at the most for a set, and they last really well. To be fair, um, they're battery powered. They you can leave them on. I found pretty much 24 hours will kill the batteries, and uh, you need more batteries. And they're little flat watch batteries. Again, I just bought a big, big pack of little cheap watch batteries, so that when I sell any of my fairy light creations, I can just I can, yeah send send a couple of batteries out with them. Because I need them to make sure they work anyway, don't they? What I do is I test them when I get them, and very often they'll come with batteries in anyway. And then I'll, um, when I've finished making the creation, I'll test them again to make sure they're still working before I send them out. And I do that because I had someone telling me that they didn't work when they received them, and then refused to send me a film of them not working to evidence it. I mean, if they genuinely didn't work, I'd have just replaced them for them, but I would have been baffled as to how it happened because I test them carefully first. So, tip for anybody who's making stuff as gifts or to sell, make sure you test things thoroughly before you send them out. So there we go, We've un I've unravelled them. And I'm going to scrunch them up and stuff them into the mould. So I just tend to do this sort of thing, just scrunch and scrunch them. This is the thing, make sure you get some down into your awkward places. Um, I do want to make sure his little head lights up. So I'm going down into his head with them. But the rest of his shape is pretty just a chunk, isn't it? It's like a real guinea pig, it's just a chunk. Might get Fudge to come and look at it at the end to approve, seeing as he's our resident guinea pig. Now, decide where you want your cable to come out. I want it to come out by his bum. Now the cable is a wire. It's quite bendy. It should stay in place where you put it. So I'm going to do that to make sure it stays put. See? Just bent it down. Now the wires are doing what the wires do, and that's going boing and popping back out. So I'm going to pour the resin in. It's full of bubbles at the moment because I stirred it too quick, as usual. Not bothered because I know it will degas. And to be honest, if a few bubbles get trapped in amongst the actual wires, um, it doesn't matter. It'll all just add to the sparkle. But typically, I don't find it's too much of a problem. I've got my little torch ready just to pop any that come up to the surface. Now these lights. Be careful what fairy lights you use in resin. These are completely sealed. They're actually waterproof and everything. I don't think the battery carrier is, but the actual light chip string itself is. Oh look, I guess that just about right, didn't I? Not much left in my pot. Shall leave my stirry stick in there, I'm not going to need my messy mat. And then I'm going to pop this down on the back and that'll just make sure that the wires stay in place. Might actually trap some bubbles though, so... Give it a quick blast from a torch. Don't know. I'm not too bothered if it does, to be honest. The main object of this is stopping the uh, the wires coming out. So all I'm going to do is I'm gonna I'll take it back off for a second. Let let the uh, let it degas a bit, and then I'll just pop this back on the back, and I'll put something 
on to keep it in place. It's just to keep the wires pushed down. That really is all that's for. So I'll, uh, I'll let it degas a bit and then I'll, uh, I'll just give it 20 minutes or something. Then I'll come and pop this back on the back. Right, I'll see you for the demo because really that's it. Of course you could tint the colour of your resin that you're using for this. You could do whatever you want really. But uh, I'm not going to. I'm leaving it clear because we're doing a multicoloured one so you don't want too much colour in there. Okay, I'll see you for the demo then. If you hear any background noise by the way, that really is bird noise. We've got some very crazy bird activity going on here today. <laughs> so, uh, there we are. See you later. Okay, let's demold this then. Ended up with a bit of overspill where the um, inlay that would lay on the back to keep the uh, keep everything in had gone a bit, you know, it had squashed the resin basically. So let's get all this surplus off. Comes off pretty easily. And then we can just demold. As you can see, it's all gone a bit funny around the edges. It's the first time using it after using that glue. So there's probably still a bit of that glue residue hanging around. So that's probably why I've got this sort of sticky mess around the edge. But it'll be okay for future mould. As you can see, it's all working beautifully. And a little bit I'll need to get a snipper on. Let's get him out. And there we go, we have the sparkly guinea pig. Now let's just trim that little bit away. I'll show you how I get rid of any surplus bits. It's just where that inlay that I put on the back had pushed the pushed a little bit of the resin out. There we are. And we are done. We have a light up guinea pig. And I didn't get much in the way of bubbles under the chin. So really happy with that. Let's see if it still works across everything. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. How lovely is that? Right, you know the routine, folks. If you've liked this video, do give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And also, if you haven't subscribed, then of course the button to do so is down here. So if you'd like to do so, there you go. If you'd hit that button too. That's all for today then, folks. I'm just going to take some photos of this. And I did promise you that Fudge would make an appearance. So I'm just going to go and get him for the photos. So I'll see you for the next video. Look, it's modelled on you. You've been quiet. Mm -hmm. What's happened to your squeak? No squeaks today. <laughs> Drink of this tin fudge. No, it's not edible. There's no point getting your teeth going ready. No. <laughs> what do you think? Shall we turn the lights off? Slightly confused looking pig. Okay. <laughs>